Uh, it is abundantly clear to me that we are living in a time where the king of the, north is, uh, king of the south is ruling this world. How soon do you think the king of the north will be coming to dismantle the king of the south? The king of the south, again, is leftism, liberalism, evolutionism, communism. The king of the north is religious imperialism. I see the, uh, the things manifesting now. In my blog, Prepare the King of the North is Coming, I outline the early telltale signs. I think this next election, this fall, is going to be empowering forces of the king of the north. And I think it's going to uh, start a cascade fall. Uh, I think um, that African Americans are going to wake up from how they have been scammed by the uh, by the um, because African Americans tend to be more um, still religious in many ways uh, than than uh, white America is. And when they wake up and realize how they have been scammed and they've been exploited by leftism and liberalism, I think there's going to be a, a backlash coming, and they're going to shift uh, like they did. I don't know if you know, black Americans voted predominantly Republican up until about 1940s. And then they shifted and started voting for Roosevelt and the Democrats, and they've stayed voting for the, that. But I think there's about to be a shift back where the people of, uh, that are more, have more conservative Christian values are going to shift and, 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 and really start voting for King of the North family values and the principles that you see. You see evidences of this, what happened in San Francisco, Virginia, Pennsylvania, and other things. And I think it's going to be, um, I, I, think, I, think that's, I think it's about to happen. Uh, happy Sabbath. Do you agree uh, that Putin, Russia, is the king of the north and Biden, the U.S., is king of the south? No. Uh, I don't think those individuals are king of the north, king of the south. I think these, that uh, Putin very well may align himself with the principles of the king of the north because he sees him. Continue on with the quote, uh, with the question. Putin last week mentioned in a speech that his, this is a war to bring morality to the world that the Christian countries, Western world, does not follow and consider anymore. That's, that's true. I think he sees himself as a bastion or a, a beacon of, of um, Russian orthodoxy, um, Russian not just political orthodoxy, Russian church orthodoxy, and he would be very much anti-LGBTQ, uh, transgender, and all this type stuff. And so he would align himself with the King of the North. He himself is not the King of the North. The King of the North, in my view, is not an individual. It is philosophical um, movements and and worldviews that all of us could align with if we chose. Uh, is it possible that the Pope can be the peacemaker and elevate him to the statue of Savior in this self-destruction, meaning the Pope identifies and becomes the King of the North? Uh, I think the Pope will align with the King of the North. I think there's going to be a very strong... Uh, currently, the Pope we have in there actually aligns with King of the South, believe it or not. Yep. He is very leftist and very liberal, and, and he is hated by many people inside the Catholic system. And as typically happens with these types of things, this particular Pope is probably going to get moved out in some form or fashion, they, uh, whether he dies um, or whether he retires like the last one did, okay, um, uh, and a very strong conservative uh, right-wing um, pope is probably going to come in, and he will be a very loud voice um, for the formation of the uh, king of the north, um, but he will not control the powers of the state um, uh, I've got a document that I've been working on. We sent it out for editing, and it'll be coming out soon about the beasts of Revelation. And I will tell you, there's some really nice surprises in my analysis of uh, uh, Revelation 13 and, and 17 that I think you'll enjoy. Um, but the traditional Adventist view that I'll just give you some teasers. The traditional Adventist view that the first beast of Revelation, with the seven heads and ten horns, is the is the is the Roman Church, um, because one of the heads was wounded, and the wound was healed. I want you to think that through. How many heads are on the beast? Seven heads How many, and ten horns. How many heads were wounded? One. One head. And that head is the Roman church. Okay? If, if the one head is the Roman church, what are the other six heads? Mm -hmm. the, church the other religions, the other denominations... In, uh, getting very close, yes. I think that if you understand the heads all had blasphemy written on them. The heads, if you read Revelation, go back and read Revelation 13, seven heads with blasphemy written on the heads. Okay? All seven heads have blasphemy, not just the one that was wounded. These are the seven false religious systems of the world. This is a conglomerate beast that presents itself in different regions and different times in, in space and in, 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 in history uh, and uh, working against um, God and God's people. And the seven heads will control the ten horns. And the ten horns are the various powers used by the earthly systems to obstruct God's purposes. And uh, this beast manifests in the Dark Ages with the Roman head obstructing. And this is why we focus there, because the focus of Scripture is always on the plan of salvation. 
And that's why this particular manifestation of the beast was focused on in Revelation, because that's where Satan was working to oppose the gospel, where it was going forward. But another false head would be Islam. Islam is a false religion and a false head. That head it is, is dominant in Saudi Arabia, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, and it directs the same ten horns there to oppose Christianity there, and so forth and so on. Anyway, um, I, think that the, uh, I don't think that the, the Pope is going to come back into power, nor is the world going to wonder after the papacy. The, po the world will wonder after the beast, which is a system of false religion that coerces with ten powers. And that system is going to become a global system, ultimately with Satan as the head. But I won't tell you anymore. You know, wait till it comes out. So is the other seven the other nations? The, seven, the other heads are seven false religious systems. Okay, so basically it's the idea of them all coexisting. They, they, all, they all coexist now, and they all oppose, they all oppose Christ now. Uh, do we have Eastern mysticism existing right now? Does Eastern mysticism support Christians or oppose them in Christianity? We have paganism, godlessness, evolutionism. We have seven different false systems, and they all, and they all have different aspects of this history of the human planet and t time and places where they are in power. The beast of Revelation 13 is a regional power, not a global power. The first beast of Revelation 13. It's a regional power. The papacy has never controlled the world. And it never will. Many Adventists don't understand that because they identify that beast as exclusively the papacy. And they don't understand that the healing of the wound is simply restoring the papacy to its ability to um, deceive and to direct the authority that it has, but it's never going to have authority over the whole world, in my understanding. But wait till the document comes out. <laughs>